Hello Pipe community, Bear Pipe here. So after I posted my last video, which was episode 28, uh, part three of the Bridger Kern project, where I tried and failed to expand the tenon, I got quite a few comments. One of the comments was a question from Angel Smell, and he said, you'd like to know uh, how I made the tenon expansion tools that I used. Now Angel Smell, luckily for you, and these are the tools I'm talking about, I videoed myself making these because I'm a geek and I video just about everything that I do, even though most of it never makes its way into a video. So I am in a position to show you how I made these. But before I do that, let me quickly talk you through it because it's actually not that complicated. Both of these things start their lives as a bright finishing nail. You can buy these in any hardware store. Uh, one is a number seven, which is about a four inches or 10, 10 centimeter long nail. The other one is a number nine, which is about three and a half inches or eight centimeters long. The first step was to do some rough shaping on a bench grinder. After that, I mounted this in the front of an electric drill so I could spin it at a fairly high speed. And as it was spinning, I used a metal file to do the detailed shaping. And then finally used some automotive sandpaper to do the final shaping and sanding of the shape. Now, as I was doing this, and I'm not gonna show you this in the video because it's gonna take way too long. I kept on checking the dimensions with a caliper to make sure that it was moving towards a calibrated size. Now, what's the calibrated size? Uh, Two different tools, two different sizes. The smaller one uh, goes from two and a half millimeters to three and a half millimeters. The bigger one goes from three to four millimeters. So there's a bit of an overlap between these two. Both of them, the tapered section is four centimeters of about, call it one and three quarters of an inch long. And beyond the tapered section, I actually ground down the nail so that it's a little narrower than the tapered portion, because of course, I don't want to overstretch my tenons. Hmm, like that would never happen. But then I also painted it just to make sure that uh, I could quickly identify visually which is the bigger and smaller one. Uh, and that's just a personal thing. And then I wrapped it with some shoestring on the back and glued it in with some super glue to make a handy little handle for it. So let me show you what the process looks like in real life. This one is finished and 
you've seen what I've done with the with the grinding of the, the shape and then I finished it with sanding using first some 300 and then some 600 grid and then polishing it up with the micro mesh pads until you get to a 1200 grid which is this mirror finish. The area that goes past the tapered portion of this I ground down as I've shown you in the video here to paint and color code and then I've wrapped in some shoelace at the back to give me a grip. <clears throat> so the next step is to paint this and I'm going to show you how I do that and then I'm going to wrap it with the shoelace. The next step is for me to paint this one. I use an enamel paint to do this and the reason I use an enamel paint is because it's quite durable and the kind of enamel paint I use I actually get from uh, my fine scale hobby usage. This is Humbrol enamel. I'm going to use this one to make it in a red. The smaller one I made black. This way I can tell which is which uh, later on so that I don't get confused. So I'm going to very carefully start doing that. I'm going to turn it a little bit. And this will just give the, it, it firstly gives it nail a nice finished look because you have this nice color on it. The more important thing is later on, these things look pretty similar once they're done. I can tell the different sizes by the different colors. So there is actually quite a good useful purpose to putting the coat of paint on this. And I'm just going to make sure that I haven't got too much paint on this and just kind of dab it at the bottom. I'm not too concerned about having the perfect red coat on this because it's not a, it's not an art project. There we go. And I'm going to let that sit and dry and then it's onto the shoelaces. And then I have my two tools that I'm going to need to widen this tenon. So it actually tightens within the stumble and it's going to go in there and it's going to spread out this, uh, this tenon and allow it to tighten up.